Hi and welcome to this week's Rep Vlog, your little island in a sea of misinformation with all the Rep Paladin videos coming out and uh, who have been out. I've upset someone else. I've actually hurt someone's feelings this week when I pointed out uh, that their video was a load of nonsense. But what I'm going to do here, originally this was going to be the final state of Rep Paladins for Battle for Azeroth because the latest build that has gone out this week is supposed to be the ability lock build. This is now the point at which developers are tuning. That was the deadline for this week. However, as some eagle-eyed people have pointed out, there are at least a couple more specs where Blizzard have said that there's still changes to come, and also there's a couple of abilities elsewhere, not for rets, that are not fully implemented. So that means one of two things. Either they are completed from the developer's point of view, it's just that the build that has been released this week is not the latest build. And, you know, because remember, developers can have several builds ahead of us. Uh, so from their point of view, it might all be finished. And, you know, that's it. Uh, we just don't get to see what it's like yet. Or they've missed their deadline. That would be understandable. I've already talked about a few issues uh, over the last month or two where I feared that Blizzard are spending a lot of time with clumsy reactionary fixes to problems instead of just getting what is the obvious solution put in place and dealt with. Um, and that's potentially had a knock-on effect. So it's possible they've missed their own deadline, in which case they can't start tuning yet. They obviously cannot start tuning until all the abilities are locked in place. You know, And it's not like you can start tuning on some specs and not others. That makes no sense. The whole point is... I know Ian has a cost to said, oh, does balance really matter? He sort of knows it does. So they are still going to attempt to some fashion to balance at least output. You know, obviously utility, but output still has to be balanced. And they can't really do that until everything's sorted. That obviously has a knock-on effect given that there is now a def definite uh, release date. However, what I'm going to do is... To go through the state that Rets are in now, it's, it's semi-final. Um, it's just there is an outside chance that there's a couple of minor tweaks that we don't know about yet. Um, and we won't necessarily find out for the next two or three weeks. Worst case scenario. But I'm going to go through now everything uh, that is going to be changing between Legion and Battle for Azeroth. So, in terms of what is being removed, so there's a number of traits on our Ashbringer that are going to be disappearing, and these are going to be disappearing as soon as the pre-expansion patch comes out. This isn't with the launch of BFA mid-August. This is specifically with the pre-expansion patch, which is usually about four weeks before that, but we don't have a date for that yet. So, Unbreakable Will is going. So, you know, if you're stuck or stunned, something like that, for a couple of seconds, uh, it breaks you out. That's not going to happen anymore. Divine Tempest, going to be much missed, uh, which projects your Divine Storm forwards. That'll be gone. Uh, healing Storm, also related to Divine Storm, doing a bit of healing. That'll be gone. And Blessing of the Ashbringer, so when you've used a Greater Blessing of Wisdom and a Greater Blessing of Kings on someone, you get the 4% Strength. That'll be gone as well. Now, of course, any or all of these traits could end up reappearing on Azeroth, uh, Azerite traits. Always remember some things that you've lost might be fed back. I do have uh, a bit of a thing that I, I don't think Blizzard are going to want to put them all back into the game. They probably have to tread a fine line. Uh, this is just my opinion, of course, but I guess they have to tread a fine line between. On the one hand, they know, uh, if they didn't think beforehand, they know now because there's been plenty of feedback that people are not happy with them yet again taking a load of abilities. From Blizzard's point of view, it's like, well, we sort of said from the start we were only giving you these for Legion. But it really makes no difference. If people get a cool ability, they want to keep it. Um, so, you know, it's a bit like, you know, the, the, the saying, the old, what was it, Wordsworth said, it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Absolute rubbish. It is always worse to lose something than to never have had it and not know your loss in the first place, I think. But anyway... So, yeah, so if they gave us all of those traits back as Azerite traits, then people will say that each expansion, all they're going to do is take away all our abilities and portion them back through the content that they're going to make us do to get them. And that's probably not good either. 
But anyway, those ones are disappearing. Certain cooldowns are going to be reverting as well because our Aspringer also reduces cooldowns of certain things or increases uh, durations. So Forbearance will be going back to 30 seconds. Blessing of Protection will be going back to 5 minute cooldown. Uh, Avenging Wrath will be going back down to 20 seconds duration. Although if you take the Crusade talent, that bungs it up to 25 seconds there as well. Um, mastery, of course, is changing. We're no longer getting the uh, Mastery linked to the Judgment debuff. Instead, it's going to buff our Holy Damage Dealing abilities by the Mastery percentage. Now, that's not the same as buffing Holy Damage. To all intents and purposes, it can likely be the same. Uh, but what it means is, in theory, let's say we got a trinket that did holy damage or something, mastery wouldn't necessarily, unless they manually made it do this, wouldn't necessarily increase that. Or if there was something as part of a fight that allowed us to deal some holy damage, again, it's not going to work on that. It's specifically um, holy damage dealing abilities. Now, judgment is still going to apply a debuff. It's just that it's a consumable debuff. So what happens now is you use Judgment and your target, and it doesn't cleave onto any other targets, it's just that one target, is going to... The next Holy Power Spender you use on it will do 25% more damage. Okay, and then it's consumed, then the debuff is no longer there until Judgment rolls around again. So we don't have to worry about a Judgment window. You can just use Judgment um, as necessary. But one other thing to bear in mind with Judgment is it now generates a Holy Power. So we don't really want to be using it on 5 Holy Power. Um, so that'll be a little bit jarring for you once the pre-expansion patch goes live. Because often you'll be used to building to 5, at certain times anyway, building to 5, and then using Judgment, and then that won't happen. Uh, you build to 4 and use Judgment. Uh, but at the same time, you also don't have to worry about only spending when the Judgment debuffs there. Because you spend when you'd normally spend and, and weave Judgment in. As um, as a high damage dealing, it's still going to deal high damage. Uh, we don't necessarily... I mean, it's going to be out of this world, I imagine, with our set bonuses. Because when the pre-expansion patch goes live, we're still going to have our set bonus, which buffs Judgment's damage as well. So actually, da Judgment... <laughs> it's going to be insane. But, you know, we're thinking for, for BFA once we've got rid of those set bonuses and all that wrong. Um, judgment is still a very high damage dealing ability, so we still want to use it fairly high priority, but it does generate a holy power spender, so you don't use it on five holy power. Okay. Defensively, mm, defensively, uh, our divine shield and blessing of protection haven't changed, but we no longer have access to the divine intervention talent, so no more cheat death. Okay. Now, granted, again. With the pre-expansion patch, you've still got the option of taking the Legendary Braces, which give you a cheat death, but you won't have access to the talent that gives you a cheat death. Um, so now, when you think you might die, you can't just think to yourself, oh, well, you know, if I do, it'll proc cheat death, it'll be fine. Unless, of course, it's something that will actually burst through a cheat death, in which case you still have to manually do it. Now you're going to have to think to yourself, you're going to have to weigh up the options. It's not like someone else that maybe has a weaker defensive on a one minute cooldown and they can use it whenever they think they might be in trouble. You know, if we use it and we don't have a talent to reduce the cooldown, because there is one, but I'll come to that later, then you've you've shot your load for five minutes. So, you know, if you're, if you're just a bit nervous and you hit it just in case, all right, you know, you, maybe you would have survived, maybe you wouldn't. You, you definitely do survive at least. But then that's five minutes where you've got to be careful. Um, so, but it's not like we've had cheat death for years and we're now we're losing it. You know, we only we only had it for one expansion. Those of us who haven't just started playing Retin Legion, uh, I mean, we you you know we had expansions before where we didn't have it and it was sort of okay. Although I would say that before that we also had Divine Protection, so we had a shortish, in fact, a very short duration. Uh, weaker defensive that we could use for those situations where you weren't sure. It's like, hmm, I might survive this, but I might not. I'll use Divine Protection. Uh, we don't have Divine Protection anymore. We do have Shield of Vengeance, of course, uh, but that's on a longer cooldown. But it is going to, on average, absorb more damage. It's based on health now, uh, so it's not going to get buffed by anything um, other than if you want to buff it, you're going to take a stamina flask. That's the only way to buff that one. Um, but it's based on your max health, basically 30% of your max health. 
Um, but also, at the end of the duration, it will burst. It doesn't matter if you haven't consumed it all, it will still burst. It will burst for the amount of damage that it did absorb, though. So if you get, you know, in those situations where it's mostly burst, but not quite, and you think, oh, I'll get nothing out of it now, that won't be the case. If you consume 95% of it, then at the end of the duration, 95% of that value will be done in holy damage to your target. So it's all good. Um, but that is it defensively. So on balance, a bit weaker. A bit weaker on defensive. Movement. Because, of course, Blizzard said back in Legion that movement and defensive is a tie. You know, if you're strong in one, you're going to be weak in the other and vice versa, which we all know is, a, is an outright lie. But let's follow this one through. Does that mean they've buffed our movement? No, they've weakened it. Divine Steed will now be on a one-minute recharge time instead of 45 seconds. Now, Blessing of Freedom, there was a point in uh, in the Alpha when they mucked about with that and they increased quite significantly the cooldown time for that. That's now been reverted, so Blessing of Freedom has stayed the same. Divine Steed has now got a longer cooldown or recharge time, technically, if you're taking the Cavalier talent, which is still there, which is still there. So, defensively, a bit weaker, you know, movement speed, a bit weaker. Sad Panda, never mind. Right, on to talents. This is where most of the changes have come in. Now, this is where... When these sort of talents, or most of these talents came in, I was so happy. Everyone knows that. I even sent cookies off to Blizzard HQ uh, and muffins and all sorts of goodies to say thank you for that. And I said, even if nothing else comes of this, you've deserved those, which is true. I still stand by that. Unfortunately, we had very little movement since. What seems to have happened is... Remember the first Q&A about BFA, Ian Hazacosta said that very few of the specs were going to be getting any real changes. Um, he said that all the specs were designed for Legion without the artifacts and the artifact stuff was just, you know, put on top of them. And again, that was absolute nonsense. Even if, you know, I don't say that he's lying about the intention. I, I can believe that that was the intention. But what I also am convinced of is if it ever was the intention that due to the pressure of deadlines and stuff like that for Legion, that effectively everything was fitted in. It was not just put on top of it. Uh, it wasn't just a cap. So the whole specs relied upon those traits. And within a few weeks of that alpha launching, Blizzard became acutely aware of that they realized that this was actually the case uh, and that they had to do a redesign so that's what they did here unfortunately they still stuck by their original story of not many specs are going to get much changes and i think after the initial hype of these changes we thought okay it can only get better now let's just get it all working almost nothing has been done since there's a little bit of tweaks been done uh, the dev to be fair to him that's been dealing with rets has been quite you know open to a lot of suggestions but there hasn't actually been anything done, um, really. So it has just been a quick job. Oh, we need to redesign it, redesign it. They've given it an intelligent person to do at least, thank God. And they've done something. It's all going to work fine. It's all going to feel fine playing it. But it's an underachievement compared with what the potential was. Should we put it that way? So let's go through the talent. So the level 15 talents... So we've got zeal, which is a different zeal to the one we've got in Legion. This zeal means that when you judge a target, uh, that your next three auto attacks will occur 50% faster. They'll also deal additional holy damage, a small amount of additional holy damage, which is buffed by mastery. So um, that's what zeal does. At the moment, it's simming quite well, but I, I do want to caution about that. I'm going to talk about this later as well. Remember, tuning is only scheduled to have begun this week. And if they are behind, then it's still not happening. So anyone who's talking about, you know, this ability is performing better than this ability, is unless they're putting the caveat in at the moment before tuning has even happened, then they're talking shit or they're just lying to you, or either way. Um, so all we can say is it's unlikely to be the strongest one when it goes live because that would be silly. Because it's the passive one. It's the one you don't even have to think about. Um, but at the moment, you know, it is fairly strong. 
Righteous Verdict is very much like the Whisper of the Nathrezim effect. It's a couple of changes. One, it only affects Templar's Verdict. This level 15 row is essentially a single target row. So what this one does is use a Templar's Verdict and you get a buff. That means that your next Templar's Verdict will deal an extra 15% damage. Uh, it lasts for six seconds. So it's, it gives you a little bit more scope than the one in Legion, the Legendary. However, I will also point out that it's quite difficult to get haste in BFA. <laughs> you know, when I dinged, I had like 4% haste and then I got some better gear and then it went down to 3.5% haste. And now I've got up to about 7% haste. Um, you know, at the point at which I'm okay to enter heroic dungeons, basically, I've got about 7% haste. Whereas in Legion, I got up to 20% haste very quickly, like within a day of dinging. Um, so, and I think we are going to be always behind the haste levels we've had in BFA. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen much later on in the expansion, but early days at least, it's going to be difficult getting haste. So, although that six second window sounds more generous and indeed will be more generous with the pre-expansion patch, it may not actually be with realistic haste values. So you might want to be thinking about that one. And then Execution Sentence. Execution Sentence again has changed. It's not like Legion Execution Sentence. So this one, it still costs three Holy Power. It's still instant. It doesn't do the silly falling hammer thing like it used to. Uh, 30 second cooldown, which is not reduced by haste. 20 yard range. So what this one does is it does some holy damage, instant holy damage, very similar to Templar's Verdict in terms of the damage it'll do. But it also puts a debuff on the target for, 20, uh, for 12 seconds, sorry. Uh, meaning that all of your holy damage dealing abilities will do 20% more damage, okay? Um, now, do bear in mind that's not all of your abilities. So that won't include things like Blade of Justice. It won't include your auto attacks, anything like that. It's specifically the holy damage dealing abilities. So, you know, your spenders certainly, but also judgments, uh, things like that, consecration. So, but we'll talk more about that in terms of... Uh, you know, uh, synergy a bit later. So the level 30 talent. So two of them are very familiar to us. Fires of Justice does what Fires of Justice does. Blade of Wrath does what Blade of Wrath does. The, the RPPM rate has changed a little bit. It's been nerfed a little bit. But, you know, I mean, that's a tuning thing. So I don't want to say anything definite about that because that could be changed. Uh, but in the here and now, it still behaves in the same way. It does the same thing. The only new talent for BFA or new compared to Legion is Hammer of Wrath. Hammer of Wrath is making a return only as a talent um there has been a push to make it baseline but as an execute only ability with the talent doing what the talent does now um to which you know the dev was again open to it but it hasn't happened i've talked about the reasons before it doesn't really matter um it's not certain that it won't happen but the chances are now much lower so what it does is first of all it's 30 yard range it's got a seven and a half second cooldown um, it deals holy damage, a reasonable amount of holy damage now. They have buffed the holy damage, but they also, people just talked about it getting a straight up buff in the last build. It didn't get a buff. It stayed the same. The damage was buffed, but also the cooldown was increased, you know. So the end result was it still does round about the same damage. The benefit of them doing it, they weren't just doing it for no reason. They were doing it because the problem was it was not intuitive, Hammer of Wrath. Because the damage appeared quite low, it didn't appear intuitive that you should use it as fairly high priority. Um, and that's bad design, in my opinion. So they recognize that. Increase the damage to make it look much more appealing, but increase the cooldown so it still stays at around about the same power level, which is actually good as well. There's been people doing rep videos saying that Hammer of Wrath is weak. It is not weak, and it has never been weak. It's just looked weak. Um, only with the benefit of Sims do you really see the great strength of it. But, you know, that's... So, obviously, most people don't get to do that. Fair enough. Um, but now it just looks much stronger. But it has never at any point been weak. Um, so, it only works on targets that are below 20% health or while you've got Avenging Wrath active, which will also count for Crusade because, remember, Crusade replaces Avenging Wrath. On to the next talents, level 45 talents. These, again, just do what they do. Fist of Justice, Repentance, Blinding Light... There's no, you know, substantial difference. Again, numbers tweaked, but there's no substantial difference in what they do. They still do the same thing. So I'm not going to talk too much about those ones. You'd still use them in the same situations you would have used them in Legion. 
On to the level 60 talents. So, three new ones here, okay, or, or very changed ones, should we say. So, Divine Judgment is the really new one. It's one I actually quite like. I like it a lot. So, what this means is every time you use a Holy Power Spender on a target or targets, if it's Divine Storm, it increases the damage of your next judgment by 15%. And it can stack up to 15 times. And bear in mind, you're probably going to be able to get several, even single targets, several spenders off before between judgments. So you can at least get it up to like 45% uh, extra damage on a judgment. And remember, judgment does quite a lot of damage. That can be quite significant. In an AoE situation, where this will shine, of course, and this is the beauty about the talents in BFA, is all of them have their place. Where this will absolutely shine, imagine a fight where... You've got ads. Now the ads, okay, they need to die, but they don't have to die within seconds. It doesn't have to be one of those where they must die immediately. The priority is going to be the boss. You know how there are some people who get single target benefit out of attacking ads, and some people don't. So those people who don't just get told, don't do any AoE, because you're actually going to kill them too quickly, and then your Shadow Priests and Warts and stuff like that uh, are going to lose their benefit. Well, we're now one of those classes because with this, we can boost our single target damage because by Divine Storming those adds, we're going to build up those stacks, get to 15 stacks, fire off the Judgment, and that Judgment is a single target spell, which will mean we get more single target damage out of doing that. Okay? Even given that we'll be using Divine Storm over Templar's Verdict, it will still result in a net increase in single target damage. So that's its real good, you know, niche situation but that doesn't mean to say that it's also not strong in general situations as well consecration consecration has been massively improved the problem with consecration has always been that first of all it's something that neither spends nor consumes holy power you dump it down it does its damage over its duration um, which is fine as long as those mobs are going to stay there for 20 seconds but if the tank drags them out or they just get dragged out or they just die within that time then you're losing a lot of the damage of Consecration, so it ends up being quite weak. The only fight I can remember using it in a raid fight on Mythic, uh, this expansion was Tychondrius, wasn't it, in uh, Nighthold. That was it. And that was only when, and even then, only when we were actually properly grouping the bats up, which didn't always happen very well. So that's been its only real use. But it, now it's been much improved. So it's still on a 20 second cooldown. Again, not reduced by haste. S but it does its damage over 6 seconds. So that means you now only have to be sure that those adds are either going to stay alive or at least stay in the consecration for 6 seconds. Even in a dungeon, that's going to be much more realistic now. And I know what some people will be thinking, because some people have said this. They said, okay, but the problem is you get those tanks that just grab hold of the mobs and just keep running and running and running, I'll not be able to use it. Well, maybe not. But also now, remember, because of the threat nerfs, which, you know, as I said in that video that I did on that, are not really going to make any tangible difference. But for those sort of people that just grab the mobs and keep running, actually it will, because they won't they won't have enough threat on them. So they're going to, tanks should be forced to properly tank the groups of mobs now, and at least, so you should be able to guarantee that they can at least keep them together for six seconds. Um, so yeah, Consecration now is looking really good. It also, which I've not put on there yet, but I should have done, missed it off, generates a Holy Power. So it generates one Holy Power as well, which also makes it really good. On to the next one in this row, that's Wake of Ashes. Now, Wake of Ashes, of course, we're used to having baseline. It's not going to be baseline, it's going to be a talent. It's also in weakened form. For a start, the cooldown isn't going to be 30 seconds, it's going to be 45 seconds. Uh, it still deals damage in the same way as it does now. Um, it reduces the movement speed. It doesn't put a dot on anything, though. So the dot has been removed in all of the respects. It sort of works, except it's, you know, it does the movement speed debuff and stuns Undead and Demons for five seconds. Still generates five Holy Power. Now, I think the reason it couldn't be done for 30 seconds was because it would have too much synergy with, say, Execution Sentence, as well as, of course, something like Crusade, uh, because it would line up beautifully each time if you use them on cooldown. So I think that's why it was put to 45 seconds. So that wouldn't be the case. Now, again, looking at some of these nonsense rep videos going around, 
There are people who are just basically looking at this and going, ah, Wake of Ashes loads better than Consecration. Consecration's a load of crap, you know, because Wake of Ashes generates five holy power, completely ignoring the damage it does. Consecration is actually, at the moment, the strongest of those talents, even on single target. Uh, but I'll come on to the relative strength later. Uh, but again, at no point has it been weak in BFA. Anyone who says Consecration is weak, instantly at that point, if you haven't worked it out already by the time they get to that point, they do not know what they're talking about. At no point has it been weak. Uh, on to the next one. So this is our weirdy one. So Cavalier still does what Cavalier does. Eye for an eye still does what that does, just with a different icon. Uh, Unbreakable Spirit is the one that has replaced Divine Intervention. So what this one does is it reduces the cooldown of Divine Shield, Shield of Vengeance, and Lay on Hands by 30%. The reduction on Divine Shield. My, my issue with this talent is... So for the reduction on Divine Shield, sounds quite nice because the biggest problem with Divine Shield is the cooldown is just too long. So, you know, knocking it down to three and a half minutes sounds great. The problem is that the talent is only then useful. If you use Divine Shield and then you get to use it or you need it again between three and a half and five minutes later. If you don't need it again within that one and a half minute window, you've wasted your talent. You might as well have taken Cavalier. And this is the big problem because there is that pressure there because Cavalier is going to be useful. Quite a lot of the fights I've been looking at so far uh, that we've seen so far anyway, Cavalier is clearly going to be useful. Now, are you going to take Unbreakable Spirit for that? But then we look at the other things. Okay, it reduces the cooldown of Shield of Vengeance by the same amount and Lay on Hands. The Lay on Hands for raiding at any rate is worthless because it goes from 10 minutes to 7 minutes. Most fights don't last seven minutes. So for a raid fight, and I emphasize that these talents are not just for raids, but I mostly come from the mythic raiding point of view, um, that makes it worthless for that. For dungeons, okay, it might make it a little bit more useful if you're in the habit of using that. Um, you know, For dungeons, actually, this talent might be a little bit better. But then again, in dungeons, our movement is sometimes an issue. And again, there'll still be that pressure to take Cavalier. Um, so... It's it's not a talent that I'm particularly in favour of because I just don't think it goes far enough. If it were like in the old days in a 50% reduction, then at that point it would become much more useful. Um, but that's not to say that I would never take it. It's just that for me the default looks to be Cavalier. And for me to take Unbreakable Spirit, I'd have to be thinking to myself, am I going to miss Cavalier? And if the answer is no, actually this fight's not so bad for movement, Okay, I'll take Unbreakable Spirit. On to the next row. So we've got Selfless Healer. This is a return uh, from before. Uh, so what this now does is when you use Judgment, it basically gives you a buff that means the next time you use Flash of Light, it will cast 33% more quickly. And it will also increase healing done on others, not yourself, by 10%. Which is a bit tight, but never mind. It is called Selfless Healer, I suppose. Um, and it can stack up to three times. Now... In reality, you know, you stack up the 33% three times. It doesn't go to 99%. What it actually means is 33 and a third percent. So it will actually be an, turn it into an instant cast flash of light if you do stack it up the three times. The issue is that the buff doesn't necessarily last a very long time. It lasts longer than the, you know, the cooldown of judgment, fair enough. And your cooldown of judgment is affected by haste. Uh, but nonetheless, you are basically having to use judgment pretty much on cooldown. You can't let it delay for too long i mean granted in most cases you won't want to anyway um but the healers as well is also noted to be it's not necessarily fantastic but it will potentially have its uses here and there um you know an instant cast one maybe for dungeons where there's a lot of movement involved even on yourself where you're not getting the benefit of the extra what would be 30 percent healing uh, the fact that it's an instant cast heal you can use on yourself on the move sounds decent. However, you know, there is a better one along the line. Now, Justicar's Vengeance, again, this does, it's close to what it does on live. It's just, it, it increases the damage on a stun target by 50%. But there's a, go, there's a lot of talk at the moment about using this as a DPS ability or using it to build up stacks of Crusade quickly under no circumstances. There is zero DPS benefit to Justicar's Vengeance. It's a heal. It's an expensive self-heal. Now, that doesn't mean to say that it's not a useful talent to take sometimes in those situations. Um, but, realistically, it's not 
uh, a DPS. The only time you could ever get any DPS benefit out of it, and you need an ultra niche situation. So you need just a cause vengeance, you need a divine purpose proc, and you need a stunned mob. In that situation, it's worth using. But if you don't have divine purpose, then it's never worth using for DPS. If you can't stun the mob, then it's never worth using for DPS. So basically forget about it for DPS. You know, if you're thinking about taking this talent because, oh, I can use it um, on a stunned mob to get extra damage out of it, you know, you won't, because it's even though it will do more damage than Templars of Verdict, it won't do more damage per holy power spent. You're wasting holy power doing that. Or if you think because it'll build up Crusade quicker, well, yes, it will, but at the same time, it's not worth the damage lost doing that either. So it is just an expense. So only think about it as a heal. Just think about the healing on it, and that's it. Word of Glory. Word of Glory has been uh, made more useful. Although it affects fewer targets now, it has a longer range, and also it does much more healing. It's actually quite useful for soloing. See, I'd normally say Just Cause Avengers is quite a good solo talent, uh, because you can stun mobs there, and, and you know, Divine Purpose is quite a decent one to take while soloing. But... Word of Glory does quite a lot of healing, uh, on, and you can use it on yourself. Now it has changed this build compared to the last build. I was, and I maybe they've paid attention because I wrote a forum post about it. Because uh, what had happened before is it was using it on a random three people that had taken damage, you know, and stuff like that. Now the problem with Word of Glory is it costs three holy power, and it's got a long recharge time. Those are costs to me if I use it. If I use it on my, let's say Agrimar, I'm about to take the, the I'm about to soak the, the doofer, the technique. And I'm on about half health. Oh, that's going to kill me. So I need to boost my health up quickly. I know I'll use Word of Glory. That's what I do at the moment, if I have no other option. Now, and that has the benefit of potentially helping a few others as well. Now, I'm all about helping a few others as well. But if I'm in that situation now with Word of Glory as it was like last week... It might heal three other buggers. I still die. No, 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 no. I'm not that selfless. I want to live. So it has now been improved. So if I use Word of Glory, basically it will definitely heal your target. So you get some control now back over it. It will then smart heal two others within a certain range of that target. I don't really know what that range is. It doesn't seem to be clear. It says naught yards on the tooltip. I've put three question marks there until I can find out what it actually is. Um, but the point is it does it, you know, to targets within that range. So if you use it on yourself, you're definitely going to get the heal and two others around you. But you can now use it against on the range camp, someone in range, which you can't do on the current Word of Glory in Legion. But you can with BFA Word of Glory. You could use it on someone in the range camp um, to try and heal them. And it'll heal a couple of others around those as well. Going to be quite useful for dungeons, but I can actually now see it being potentially useful for raids in a tight situation as well. Do remember, though, that three holy power cost. Uh, but in all the respects, it's you know it's the same. It, it still has three holy power cost. It still has two charges, one minute recharge time. On to the final talent here. Uh, so we've got Divine Purpose, which is just Divine Purpose. That hasn't changed at all at the moment. We've got Crusade, which has changed a little bit. So first of all, it lasts for 25 seconds. Um... And also it stacks up to 10 times. It's still increasing your damage and your haste by 3%, but it's only going to stack up to 10 times, last for 25 seconds. Uh, other than that, it does what it does. It's now no longer the go-to talent. It's not the talent we have to take. You know, you've got a bit more choice. And we're nearly on to the point where we can compare some of them. Now, Inquisition is again the new one. We've had Inquisition before. It's changed for this one a little bit. Um, it works in a similar way, but also significant differences. So, it will consume up to three holy power. You don't obviously choose how much. It just depends how much you've got. But if you've got one holy power, you can use it on Inquisition. If you've got two, you can use it. You can, if you've got three or more, it will consume three holy power. It will increase your, at the moment, damage and haste by 8%. That, of course, is up for tuning. Because uh, at the moment, it's the stronger of the three. But it will increase your damage and haste by a certain amount uh, when they finish tuning. It lasts 15 seconds per holy power spent, but you can bung it up to a full minute duration. So what I mean by that is, let's say you've got some holy power and you've used Inquisition and then it's ticking down. 
And let's say it gets to 15 seconds and you've got a load of holy power. You can hit the Inquisition again. It will consume three holy power, adding 45 seconds to that to give you now one minute on it. Um, now, it won't go beyond that one minute. If, for example, let's say you've got five holy powers saved up and you use Inquisition, it will consume three, give you 45 seconds. If you try and hit Inquisition immediately again, it won't actually let you. So it's quite good in that it doesn't really allow you to waste much holy power on it. You know, if the holy power you have means it will consume enough to go above that minute thing, it just won't let you hit Inquisition. But generally speaking, you'd want to hit it when you're below 15 seconds with three holy power anyway. Um, you don't really want to be using it on less than two holy power. There's no real value in doing it on one holy power just for 15 seconds. So, you know... It's, it's relatively straightforward to use. It's nice and easy to maintain. But there are a lot of people who aren't keen on it for whatever reason. But do remember then, you've still got Crusade and Divine Purpose. So let's move on to some comparisons. So Sol Sacra did some comparison sims. Now bear in mind this is a couple of builds ago. But given that nothing has changed in power since then, there's going to be very little difference with these at all. So these are still good. And what we notice is the top... I mean... The top 10 are separated by about 5% in relative power. But you will notice, so the best talent set of all, damage-wise, this is for single target. I stress, whenever you get C-Sims done, they're always uh, with patchwork fights. So it's stood still, hitting single target. But for those fights, at the moment, we're looking at Zeal, Hammer of Wrath, Consecration, and Inquisition. So again, I'll draw people's attention to the fact that in single target, Consecration is the strongest option in that what is otherwise an AoE talent row. So even when tuning's done, it's certainly not going to be weak. If you like Consecration, take Consecration. More than, Obviously, people are going to super min-max. All right, You're going to take what's going to sim best for you on the type of fight you're going to do. But if you're going to be doing, say, lower Mythic Plus dungeons or heroic dungeons or something, or heroic raids, I meant something like that, you know, you're not going to be doing the stuff that absolutely requires you to min max, you know, and, and grab every extra percent or half percent gain you can. And, you know, as long as you just want to be on the coattails of, of min maxes, then. There should be no reason why you can't take whatever talents you choose. That was not the case in Legion. That has generally not been the case ever. For the first time, we may realistically, and that's how good these talents, that's why I'm, I was so uh, supportive of these talents, it's really because it's possible to balance them. It's possible to get them pretty close. And in those situations... You know, you can pick. If you if you like Righteous Verdict, take Righteous Verdict. All right, you're going to get no... I mean, in an AoE situation, that's stupid. Don't take Righteous Verdict in a Mythic Plus dungeon. That's just daft. Um, but you know what I mean? For single target, if you want to take that, you take that. If you want to take Consecration on a pure single target, you take that. If you want to take Wake of Ashes, then you can take that. Uh, you know, you take what you want to take. And as long as you use it correctly, it will do virtually as well. So if we look down here, even Divine Purpose, which is significantly behind the others, if we look at the highest sim in Divine Purpose, um, you know, setup, which is Zeal, Hammer of Wrath, Consecration still, but with Divine Purpose instead of Inquisition, that comes out at about 5% less damage on average than taking Inquisition. So it's significantly behind it. But, you know, 5%, again, if you're just doing that sort of content, isn't as big a deal as if, again, you're having to min-max where 5% would actually be a lot. So you can sort of really consider which one you prefer. And bear in mind, tuning hasn't finished yet. Um, now, it would be difficult, admittedly, to tune Divine Purpose and get it to be on par with Crusade and Inquisition, even if they nerfed Inquisition a little bit. Because what you can see from this list here is Divine Purpose is still looking a bit better than Crusade even. So it may be possible for them to do something else to Divine Purpose and get all three. So if you like the proc play, base play, gameplay, then take Divine Purpose, take Blade of Wrath. You know, if you don't, don't take either of them. There should be no need 
to either deny yourself those sort of talents or to be forced to have those sort of talents. And that's what's so good about it. If you really dislike Inquisition, you shouldn't need to take it. At the moment it's looking strong because tuning hasn't started. And I'll emphasize that again. I said I would earlier on in the video. Tuning has not begun. Well, in theory, it may have begun. But again, it comes down to the fact that some specs are unfinished at the moment. Is it because they are actually unfinished, they've missed their deadline? Or is it because well, they are finished, but they just haven't put the finished builds up for us to have a look at ourselves? I don't know the answer to that one. But nonetheless, at the point at which this build is, and, and that these sims could be taken, tuning had not started. So, you know, forget all about that. Right, just finally, let's have a look at some uh, Azerite traits here. So, as a lot of people have noted, the Azerite traits you'll have probably come across in the BFA beta, if you've been in the BFA beta or looked at people's, is just adding a certain amount of damage or adding a dot to ability. So, for example, Avenger's Might is a very common one for the earlier Azerite pieces. Avenging Wrath is active, your mastery is increased by a certain amount. Fairly uninteresting there. Um, but bear in mind, you know, there's different types of Azerite traits. There's going to be the Azerite traits on the gear you get from leveling. They're obviously going to be the most uninteresting, bog standard. Then there's the one in dungeons. Now, I, the dungeons is the greatest enigma for me because I don't really know exactly where they're going to go with that in its entirety because on the one hand, you can do dungeons while leveling. You can do dungeon, heroic dungeons. They're fairly low level. And so obviously, yeah, it's absolutely justifiable that the traits will be fairly uninteresting. But then you can push high mythic plus keys. And in theory, you'd still be getting the same piece as just higher item level. So there ought to, from that point of view, maybe there should be a little bit more interest on it as well. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to go with that. Even though we can have a look at some dungeon traits at the moment, I'm not sure that they're all in. I, I hadn't checked the latest build. The raid traits, however, should be the ones that change our gameplay significantly. Blizzard said that you can think about the raid traits as being similar to two set tier bonuses that we've had up to now. So they, they potentially will change your action priority list or they will change the way you approach the game in some other way. Uh, they have that game changing element to them. So let's have a look at some of these other ones. So Deferred Sentence, Crusader Strike has a 3% to condemn your target dealing X holy damage after seven seconds. Um, you, you have to hope that, you use, that your target's still alive those second seven, seven seconds later. So that might not be all that useful in, for soloing. Um, I'm not looking at exactly where these are from at the moment. I'm going to guess that's from a dungeon one or something like that. Because that would be a bit crap for soloing because I don't expect any mob to last seven seconds unless it's an elite mob or something. Um, divine right when divine storm damages an enemy who is below 20% health your strength is increased by 208 for 10 seconds that's just the standard number there it'll increase presumably in proportion to the item level of the the equipment that would be an interesting one if it means that it's worth using divine storm even on single target just to get the buff uh, if it doesn't become worth doing that then that's a bit less interesting um, but that's you know potentially something that could change your gameplay about it couldn't it because then that's like, below 20%, we want to maintain that buff. Use a Divine Storm, get the strength. 10 seconds later, use another Divine Storm. Um, so that one has a bit more interest. And whether it's a good one is another matter. But it has that element of interest there. Expurgation, your Blade of Justice critical hits cause the target to burn for a certain amount of holy damage um, over 6 seconds. There is another one. Uh, yeah, Searing Blades down there. Your Blade of Justice crits also burn the target for a certain amount of holy damage over 6 seconds. So they're different numbers, but they still do the same thing. A crit Blade of Justice deals some holy damage. Which, unless they've manual, and this is what I was talking about with Mastery, unless they've manually triggered those traits to benefit from Mastery, that wouldn't necessarily benefit from Mastery. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that Mastery straight up buffs your holy damage specifically holy damage abilities. Now it could well be that they do, because it, basically anything, ma all the abilities that benefit from mastery are just on a list. You know, they have to add spells to that list to get them to work. It's not just a blanket holy damage increase. So whether those would be buffed by your mastery or not, I don't know. But it would be important to know that to decide on whether it's. it might be that those traits are worth taking for someone with high mastery and not so much a person with low mastery. 
Uh, Furious Wrath, when your Avenging Wrath ends, you gain up to a certain amount of strength, throw intellect for 15 seconds, based on how much damage and healing you did while Avenging Wrath was active. So this is a bit like getting a damage buff after your damage buff, but you get a bigger damage buff if you fully utilized your first damage buff. So that again has a little bit of interest. Uh, that one sounds a little bit more interesting. Grace of the Justicar, judging a foe heals all allies. That's a holy one, forget it. Indomitable Justice, judgment deals additional damage when your health exceeds the target's health up to a certain amount of damage. Not going to be very useful on most bosses, is it? So I think, again, this was probably going to be a leveling one, um, maybe in a dungeon, uh, because, you know, to deal additional damage when my health exceeds the target's health is not likely to happen on uh, a raid boss, even at 1%, is it? Uh, so, you know, I don't think that'll be a raid one somehow. Uh, Relentless Inquisitor, spending holy power grants you a certain amount of haste for 10 seconds per holy power spent, stacking up to 20 times. So again, useful for a longer duration fight, a boss fight, say in a dungeon. Uh, not, not at all useful for soloing, unless you can properly chain pull. Um, but, you know, but again, that one sounds useful for what it is. You wouldn't really have to think about it if you're not spending holy power every 10 seconds and something's going badly wrong on a boss fight. Uh, so that one sounds potentially, again, interesting, worth tracking, but you shouldn't really have to do anything special for it. So I'd think probably more like a dungeon one than a raid one. Searing Blades, we've already talked about that one. Zealotry, casting Crusader Strike, increases the damage of your Crusader Strike uh, for 20 seconds. So stacking up to 10 times. Again, just, you know, Crusader Strike buffing your next one. But, you know, given that it lasts for 20 seconds, you're very likely... Like, Crusader Strike is very low priority. I suppose it's, again, sort of the, you track it just in case it's, it's maybe conceivable to go for 20 seconds without using another... Crusader Strike depend on your talent setup, um, but you know it's probably unlikely, but it's probably worth doing anyway. So you give yourself a little warning. If it's five seconds left to go in the duration, uh, use a Crusader Strike for Christ's sake. Uh, I think is what that would say. But you know, again, you know, another interesting one there. Um, and Gallant Speed inspire yourself in nearby allies while Divine Steed is active, granting speed until cancelled. So your Divine Steed gives others speed it gives yourself as well so it increases your own so it increases the speed benefit of your own divine steed and also gives everyone else a speed buff as well i suppose that puts it in the utility bracket doesn't it especially if it's decent i don't know in terms of the numbers what that means in terms of percentage uh, movement speed increase but also divine steeds cooldown is reduced to 50 seconds oh thanks very much still five seconds more than legion Pain in the ass. But, um, yeah, that might put it into, you know, where normally a roar would be needed because the whole group has to move fairly quickly. You know, the fact that you could use Divine Steed and, you know, that benefits everyone else as well. It, it just says nearby allies. It doesn't say how close they have to be for that one. But, yeah, that, that could be a useful utility one that you keep in your bags for particular fights where it would be useful. Um, I'm not at all opposed to ones that give us some utility because the utility at the moment is pretty weak. But of course, it also sounds like the sort of thing that you could give a Holy Paladin as well or a Protection Paladin. So any Paladin, obviously, in your raid would be able to benefit from that. Uh, and of course, it's possible that there are similar traits for other classes as well. So it might not be all that niche. It might be that everyone has access to it. And it's just, you know, draw the short straw for whoever's going to lose their DPS bonus to put on their utility as a right armor piece. Maybe. So there we are in terms of where we are with the Rep BFA. That it's it's I call it semi-final. It is sort of probably final. It wouldn't surprise me if this is the state it goes into. I will just go through a quick list of the things that, if anything does change, might be the things that change. So I and, and this is just based on the fact that Sephers, the developer who's dealing with Rep Paladins uh, as well as other specs, has talked about. So. Initially, he wasn't all that enamoured of the Judgment debuff, just the 25% increased damage thing. But it's been a while since that's been discussed, so I think that might be fairly set. But in theory, if he could think of something else for Judgment to do other than just do that, that might change it. 
uh, but I don't think that's now on the table anymore. Hammer of Wrath going baseline, but as an execute only, with the talent allowing it to also be used during Avenging Wrath is possible. That's been pushed for. Uh, that is possible. But again, you know, don't know. Greater Blessing of Kings, I think, was the main one that was very uninspiring. Uh, the only reason we use Greater Blessing of Kings really at the moment is, well, one, we might as well, but two, mostly it's to get the 4% strength buff. That's why I refuse to put it on our tanks because they keep bloody changing spec uh, when they eat a feast, so they're not having it because that removes it. Um, I don't know why it is that someone else changing spec, the target changing spec, should remove the buff I put on them. I don't get that, Blizzard. Change that because that's just silly. It's just petty apart from anything else. It makes no sense. But anyway, there is now no reason um, to use Greater Blessing of Kings. It's quite weak. I mean, it's, it's there, so I suppose you might as well. It's not like you can use two Greater Blessings of Wisdom. But, yeah, there was talk about maybe changing what that did because, it's, you know, everyone knows, Blizzard knows that it's crap. Um, and now that we don't even get the 4% thing, it's like it's super crap. So um, that's a possibility as well. Divine Purpose, there's also a possibility that something will change with that. It's You can't just increase the percentage proc rate on it, but there might be some other thing. It might, for example, be possible to change it. I know one idea that was touted was making it so that as well as the proc chance that when you consume your Divine Purpose proc, it adds a little bit of damage stroke healing to the ability you use it with. Um, you know, so obviously healing for Word of Glory, but damage for everything else. So that's a possibility there. And Inquisition is the only one where that wouldn't work with, but Divine Purpose and Inquisition are on the same row. So that would only be an issue for the pre-expansion patch where you may take Inquisition, but also have Soul of the High Lord. Um, but then that's not a big deal if it doesn't do anything to that. It could maybe just, someone said, add to the duration of it or something. Uh, but that really doesn't matter. So those are the ones at the moment that potentially are up in the air that might see a change. But everything else is basically set. Even those are probably set because if they are behind on their schedule, they need to catch up really quickly and they're certainly not going to be looking at RETs. RETs are not one of the ones that they talked about before this whole process has been in need of changes. So um, just from that point on, expect tuning, but no changes to the abilities. So I hope this was useful. It's gone on for quite a while. Uh, if you've got any questions, of course, you can ask them below. You can catch me on a stream at some point. Check out my uh, Twitch stream there. I will be doing a live rec Q&A at some point. I'm going to wait until it's definitely fixed, until we're definitely into tuning before I schedule that. But that will be coming out at some point, some Saturday. Uh, so thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. It really helps. And until next time, I'll see you later and stay away from the crap rep videos.